I like to talk about things that a lot of other people don't like to talk about. I like to share the stories that everybody loves to hide. Friends, family, and fans, welcome back to our channel. I'm your host, Fania Thomas. Today, we sit down with YouTuber Tariq Ali, who is one of the recipients of the YouTube Black Voices Creator Class 2021. So sit back, relax, and enjoy our chat. We always talk about, man, we gotta have more Black stuff. We want to introduce Black Creator to you. Put them in your network. Every player's got his different methods. My name is Tariq Ali. I am many things, um, but I know in this business you have to use labels, otherwise people don't know who you are. <laughs> um, I'm a creator, I'm an artist, I'm a YouTuber, I'm an activist, I'm also a scientist. I just received my bachelor's degree in biology last year. I was studying to be a dentist and a doctor for like six years. I did internships at National Institutes of Health. I did research for three years, Columbia University in New York. Um, just so much in science and health. My main goal has always been to just help people in whatever way I could find. And I come from poverty and I come from a lot of mis un unfortunate events. So I just thought my ticket out of that was education. And so I went the STEM route, which was education, going to college and everything. Um, but once I realized that um, I could help people in many different ways using my creativeness and just using my art um, and using my voice to communicate with the world, then I started leaning into that because that's honestly what my first dream was growing up. So um, my content is really just about taking people on the journey of what I'm going through in the moment, my trauma, my uh, difficulties, my struggles just so other people can relate and understand that they're human and it's normal. I'm not just gonna brush over the fact that you're a scientist. Like what? <laughs> How, when, where? Are you gonna revisit that later on? What was your interest in that? Was it just because of money or because of a cute title? I was homeless at some point. Um, my parent, my biological parents, um, they were present in my life, but at some point they didn't have the funds to take care of me. And they also were having their own struggles with uh, drug abuse and different things like that. So I was juggled around a lot of different homes. And at some point my aunt and uncle took me in when I was 15 and I was homeless. And my aunt is a pharmacist and they are more upper middle class. So uh, my track coach used to call me Will Smith cause he was like Fresh Prince. Um, but she was like, during the summer, I would stay home. She was like, you're not staying at home. You need to get an internship. I'm like, what is an internship? Um, and I was in 10th grade. My first internship was at Howard University because she went to Howard for pharmacy school. And they taught me all these different things about healthcare. And I loved helping people. Like, it's fun. I have the personality for it. Um, and I was good at science. So it just made sense. And then ever since then, I locked in. I said, oh, wow, this is going to be how, you know, I'm going to assimilate into society and get out of my situation. I'm happy that you had, you know, relatives in your life to help mentor you and usher you and pour love into you. Um, that's so important, having community. Um, so speaking of community, this new YouTube community that you are now a part of, before we jump into that, share with us, how did you start creating? I was a big drama geek. I love theater. I used to do a whole bunch of plays at my church. Um, in the drama ministries, but I also did it at my school. Um, I just love the arts, I love dancing, I love acting, I loved music. And so once life happened um, and you know homelessness happened and poverty happened, you start to realize what the things that are privileges in your life. Um, like getting up and just deciding what you want to eat is a privilege, honestly. Having somewhere to sleep is a privilege. At some point, heat was a privilege because it was once we went a blizzard without heat. So it was like drama and the arts wasn't really something when you, when you don't have money, that's not really a thing. All of the drama camps and the drama internships, those cost thousands of dollars. Rather STEM, you know, the government and everyone puts a lot of money into STEM um, and you get paid to do those things. So the arts wasn't really accessible to me. I would study all week and the only day I would have off would be like a Saturday. And it was like, I can't go do a play because I don't have time for that, but I can put this camera up and do little skits and have yeah. fun and just be myself and be theatrical on camera. Um, so at first it really was just an outlet for my creative side and for me to just be an artist and just keep doing what I had to do in real life. Because at that point it was just a hobby and people kept telling me this is not something you do full time. So um, I didn't even know you could make money from the platform at first. What's it like being a part of this YouTube program and what do you hope to get out of it? For years, I started to notice how the same thing I did, I didn't get much attention, I didn't get much views, and I didn't really care about that at the point. 
at some point, but it was like, I would see my white counterparts doing the same things and getting so many views and so much money. And like, you know, we see this in every avenue. We see it in entertainment, we see it in music, we see it in television. And I think on YouTube for years, I just got used to it. It was the norm. Um, and people have spoken up about this. It was a good moment to finally see the place where I was using to use as my outlet for my creative side to say, we see you and we want to support you. And we see the problem and we see how we, how we have contributed to that, but we want to change that. I'm surrounded by other black creators. Um, we see each other every single day. Uh, they're giving us different resources, telling, uh, giving us just different opportunities, trying to help us grow trying to help us become, even outside of the platform, better business people, um, how to manage our money and things like that. Is it like school? <laughs> you know, as a, as a uh, recent graduate, it is feeling like college a little bit, um, you know, uh, but I will say they are not pressuring it. What I'm getting from it is in, in an honest and transparent, I see this as them honestly just trying to support and give resources. So it, they do give us some funding for us to keep producing the content that we were already making on the platform. Um, they are very aware of the pay gap um, when it comes to black creators and white creators. And they said, hey, off the back, here's some funding to help you keep producing your content and for you to keep just being you on this platform because we appreciate you. And then also here's some resources like there's every single day there's there's a three week incubator program. So it's, um, I think of it like a conference. Um, and so there's these different sessions of like entrepreneur 101 or like um, storytelling in digital and on YouTube and like different things um, to help you be a better YouTuber, creator and an entrepreneur. I mean, I think it's really nice because you have a different range of different YouTubers in the program. Like there's people with millions of subscribers. There's people with small amount of subscribers, people that just started, um, some people with more experience. And so when we do get together and we talk, not only are we learning from the people that the people that YouTube is hiring to talk to us, but we get to connect as like creator to creator. Like I've been doing this for six years. I've been doing this for two years. And it's a nice community feel. From video one, Maybe video like 13 or like 11, or you know, even 25. How have you grown? What have you learned from video today? I've been doing this since, like I said, 11th or 12th grade. So it's been about five or six years. Um, but this is the very first year that I've done it full time. I've never done YouTube full time or looked at it as this is my job, this is paying the bill. <laughs> Before, it was just something I was doing, you know, um, for fun and for my artistic side. I and mean, then I got caught up in the views and the like, oh, I need to make this video because it do really well. It'll build me over here. I can make more money doing this. Boom, 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 boom. You know, with any pressure in any uh, field you work in, you start to drown if you get really caught up. Yeah. And if you forget to keep yourself above water and to realize, you know, what you're, the goal of what you're looking at. So I would say I got caught up in that. Um, and to be completely transparent, recently my views have done like a dip <laughs> because I've just changed kind of um, what I'm feeling. I'm an artist and, and I'm, my content and my art is connected to my emotions and where I am in life. My YouTube channel is about my journey. I would say a dip in views happened because I just changed the direction of the things I talk about and the things I do. And at first that messed up my ego. At first I was like, oh my gosh, um, this is the end of my career. Oh my gosh, I gotta go to dental school. I gotta go to med school now, <laughs> you know? So, But I will say it, it was actually really refreshing. After a little while of thinking about it, I was actually grateful um, because now I'm, I'm not a slave to the views anymore. I'm glad you figured it out because I don't want you to go to dental school. I want you to keep creating. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm really just inspired by anybody black on the platform and trying really hard and being consistent and especially my black queer family because it's very hard for us because I feel like we are pinholed in what we are expected of. Like, especially for me, I feel like in the first few years, people expected me to be the messy gay or the one that okay. was like, oh, what's the tea? Like very... You know, and, and that's not even just with black gay people, but just, I feel like when it comes to people of color, they look to us for something. Um, it's like white people can be everything, um, but we have to be the, you know, certain things for certain avenues. How is the full body image coming along? How many photos do you have in your camera roll? Aw, uh, thank you for asking that and holding me accountable. It's really actually going really well. It was really bad in December, but I will say it's, 
it, it's it's a process. It's it's not like you reach this enlightenment, like oh, I love my body now. It's it's a continuous thing. You have to love is a practice. And and I read that in this new Brene Brown book I'm reading. It's like loving. You can say you love someone. But that's just words, but it's about practicing that love. And every day you have to practice that love. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing that with me. It's like, yeah, I can say I love my body, but I have to make sure I'm telling myself every day I'm beautiful. I'm complimenting myself. That's why I say it in all of my content on Twitter, on Instagram, on YouTube, because you have to you have to put energy into that. And I think that's why it's so hard for people is because people are exhausted and they don't want to put the energy into a child. I get it. I'll be exhausted sometimes. And it's not going to be perfect every day. You're not going to be uh, daisies and peaches and cream every day. But it's just knowing that it's, it's never an end goal. It's, you're always growing. You're always learning. There's never a point where you finished and you good and you're perfect. I like to talk about things that a lot of other people don't like to talk about. I like to share the stories that everybody loves to hide. Um, I think that these are the things that make us feel more connected to other people. And that's why I'm so open to sharing them through my YouTube, through my writing and through my speaking. Well, did you enjoy our chat? We really hope you did. <laughs> Please do us a favor, don't forget to hit subscribe. And also, most importantly, don't forget to turn on notifications because we're gonna be dropping interviews and chats all month long. See you on the next one.